It's like I lost the two people in my life that I cared about the most. That actually like two people that actually provided me something that gave my life some sense of purpose I thought I had a future with those people in my life and I don't know why but with them gone now I just I can't I can't see my future anymore and I suppose that makes sense because I don't have a future anymore not one that can be solidified in any way in my mind. It's all just fluid chaos that has All I feel every day is that I've made the worst possible decisions I could possibly make. And that I wish I could take them back. But I don't know where that's coming from. Where that feeling is coming from. Is it just... Is it coming from my grief? Because it, it seems like I just want comfort. Like I just want that sense of comfort that I used to know. That I used to have. The comfort that everything is going to be alright in the end. That it would all make sense. And that you don't have to worry about all these things. Because it's all going to be okay. And I think the only reason I was able to feel that before was because of the people in my life that I knew I had and could count on. Like, my best friend and greatest enemy was my brother. And he provided me with a purpose and a goal and he was a mirror to look at and compare myself to he was a big brother and I lost that But before I lost my brother, I lost the love of my life. And I did 
that one on purpose. For whatever reason. I didn't choose to lose my brother. And that's why it feels like I made the worst, dumbest, fucking possible decision. To purposefully lose the most important person in my life. For some reason, I thought that was a good idea. Because I thought it would make me stronger in the end. And that I could find myself and be myself by myself. That's what I wanted. And then my brother kills himself. And I don't know, everything just doesn't make sense anymore. And everything that, like, I completely regret breaking up with my girlfriend and it feels like the worst mistake I've ever made is I think that's you know to some degree I think that's normal It's only, it hasn't even been three months yet. Of course, I'm gonna miss her. And of course, I'm gonna have thoughts of regret and confusion and I'm gonna second guess myself. I knew this was gonna happen. The two weeks I had post breakup, I knew that it was gonna fucking come crashing down and I was going to question everything and I would have no confidence and that's where I'm at right now and it's it's so confusing because I don't know what's real anymore I I don't know why I have the feelings I have. Why I... Like, how much is it... How much is my sentiment coming from the grief of... Just losing the person that I've loved for the past five years and of course wishing they were still with me that that takes time to get over but I question if my feelings of regret come from that to simply missing her or if it comes from a feeling of knowing that I fucking fucked up because after I lost my brother uh, how can I think it's a good idea to purposefully lose somebody else that is your family somebody else that you 
want to spend the rest of your life with? How can you purpose? How can you choose to? Why would you choose to not have that? think that makes me think that I should do everything I can to fix this to to not live my life like this killed himself because of the mental illness that plagues our family. I think I well I know I I destroyed my life. I was completely self-destructive and burned everything down that I had worked to create because of the mental illness that plagues my family. There's no there's there's no other explanation other than I actually did go crazy. That I was in psychosis. And while that may have brought what I thought were good ideas into my life I think the truth is that all it did was destroy my life that's really the only matter of fact. That whatever I had going on inside my head led me to self-destruct and destroy my life. It was self-sabotage. I think I... I really think I deceived myself. And that... it was all... just a fucked up game that I played in myself... Literally, that's what it was. I was just, I knew, because I knew what I was doing. I knew that these were terrible fucking decisions to make. Nobody in their right mind would ever. That's it. Nobody in their right mind would ever do the things I did. 
And I did the things I did because I wasn't in my right mind. So how am I supposed to reconcile that? How am I supposed to deal with my thoughts that tell me that this was all the biggest mistake of my life and that I should do everything I can to fix it? Because that feels real. It feels like I did fuck up. I'm scared that I fucked up so bad to the point where I didn't lose just a brother this summer. I lost everything. I don't feel like I have a life to live anymore. The life I'm living is just a shell of it what of what it once was. There's nothing filling it. no meaning, there's no purpose, there's no happiness, there's no love. I am truly in the worst place of my life right now. And I don't know how I can fix it. I don't know if I should fix it. Because I still don't know where my feelings are coming from. Are they coming from the grief? of losing a brother and just wanting wanting to I want to replace what I lost with what I lost I lost two family members. One of them died, but one of them is still alive. So, it hurts me more to know that the one I love the most is still out there, living. It hurts me more to think about that than it does to think about my dead brother. so much knowing that this is all your fault 
Every last bit of it. You caused all of it. No one else is to blame besides you. Death is hard. Death is really difficult to come to grips with. But the death of a relationship feels worse. I can't... I can deal with the fact that brother's dead because that's all there is to it. He's gone now. I can't do anything to help him. Maybe I could do something to help myself. I can't, I can't bring my brother back from the dead. But what if I could bring my relationship back from the dead that's why it's so hard for me because it's like I literally lost the two most important people in my life yet it's one of them is still out there and it I still, I still want to be with them, and I know they're out there, I know they're not dead, and if I can be with them, Why shouldn't I? Why would I not want to? I do. Now I'm going to hotbox my car, and hopefully 
I don't know. I was going to say, hopefully have some happier thoughts, but there really aren't any. I'm thinking about what's most important to me. I'm thinking about what's, I'm talking about what's on my mind. And that's, that's all there is. If I'd never get out this inner monologue that just repeats day in and day out, it never changes. I have to say what I think so that I can move forward with new thoughts. So I do think it's normal to want to get back together with your girlfriend after breaking up. That's a normal thing to feel. You don't have to act on it as much as you want to, as much as Some of the time, it sounds like the only good thing you could do. It very well could just be another terrible mistake. And the fact that you're able to say that shows that you don't know what you want. There's no way you can tell me you know That you want to get back together with her and spend the rest of your life with her and just be happy. You still don't know if that's If that's right. But. At the same time. How could it not be? Your brother just killed himself. And. And you regret everything you've done.
帰る。I think this is a terrible form of torture that I'm putting myself through. But I, that's why I feel like I could make it better. And I don't know how, but one idea is to try and. I can't right the wrongs I've done. That's not how it works. You can't go back and fix your mistakes. That's unless you can though. Does it hurt to try? Would it be so bad? I don't know what I want out of this life. I was so sure that I was destined What the f- fuck am I watching right now? What the f- I think I'm watching my dad walk up to a group of high school teenagers in the parking lot of the local grocery store. And I think I think I'm watching him about to give them gospel tracks. Now, these kids can't be any older than 16, 17. They're all just in a circle under the lights of the parking lot and I think I just watched my dad walk up to them and surprisingly they're 
all still standing there, listening to him. Okay, one walked away. You know, probably because they don't know what the fuck to do. Okay, a couple more walked away to get in the car. Okay. <laughs> okay, they're all they're all walking away now. Okay. Okay, it's over. I'm like I'm like 90% sure that's my father. More like 99. <laughs> Oh, what a guy. And then he just walks back and gets in his car. And then drives away to go home. What a fucking guy. That's. What a fucking creep. I mean, fuck, dude. Imagine. You're just a group of, like, 16-year-old guys and girls fucking around, having fun. And this 60-year-old scrawny dude walks up to you and starts talking about God? Now, this is what my father does, though. He likes to spread the love of God in the way that he sees best fit. And... It wasn't up until recently that, you know, I actually admired that in him. Because that's something he's been doing my entire life, is taking time away from his family that he used to have. Time away from being with his kids to go talk to random strangers about God. That was always more important to him than spending time with his family and his kids. I never I never looked at it in a positive way until a while ago I just ran into him on the streets and I was like, what are you doing up here? And he just... He just said he's spreading God's love. Doing what he can. He said that in some form. But... When he said that... And when I realized all he was doing was going around and talking to people, it just dawned on me that, like, that's what I want to do. That's like exactly what I want to do. 
Except I'm not a creepy 60-year-old man talking about There's no, there's no God that loves you if you don't love yourself. There's no God that's going to take care of you and make sure everything is all right if you don't do that for yourself. God's not going to save you. You are. What did I say? I said, God's not going to save you. You are. That would be the difference in message from what my dad would try and... Why can't I think of the word when you're just out talking to people about God? You're not preaching. You're... Oh, oh, it was right on the tip of my tongue. Fuck. Uh, Witnessing. It's called... Witnessing. Because you witness God's love and you want to share that with others. Is that that how it works? So... Instead of being... a witness of God, I would be like, I would try and be a witness myself, of myself, uh, because I would be witnessing, to witness is to have knowledge of, from personal observation or experience. Experience. Oh no. Oh no. He's he, he's coming back? Oh my god. Oh my god. 
he's actually coming back. Okay, fuck. He went home to get gospel tracks, I think. And now he came back to the group of teenagers that is... One of them's just swinging around a golf club in the parking lot. But he came back, and I think he's just giving them all his gospel tracks now. Oh my god, I would have... I would have ran the minute that man came walking my way if I were any of those kids. Because that's, that is not a situation you want to be in. Talking to my dad. And now it's fucking raining out. And they're all just standing there. And he's... Trying to witness to them... I think they're all trying to get in their cars, their trucks now and get away. I mean, that would be the smart thing to do. But it just fucking blew my mind when I realized that I want to follow in my father's footsteps. Or that's, like, what I had in mind. Like, not literally, like, that that was never what I had in mind. But I realized that if I moved forward with my plans and doing what I wanted to do, which was just go walk around and... talk to people, strike up a conversation. If I did that, I would literally be doing the same thing my father has been doing my entire life. That's always been his favorite thing to do. But of course there's a difference. Of course. Big difference. I do not want to do what my dad does. Because I don't think he gets anywhere with it. Well, that's a lie. He gets somewhere with it. I'm sure he... meets a person here and there that connects with him and wants to talk about God. And that's that's all I would be looking for. Not everybody wants to talk about God. But if you keep trying, I'm sure you'll run into somebody eventually that... Open minded. Like, I just wonder what my dad's approach is. Like, what what's his question that he asks? Like, does he 
I feel like he used to ask, like, like, do you believe in God? Like, out on the streets. I feel like that's what he used to say. Something short and sweet. Or he would, or it would be like, do you want to hear, he was only ever trying to share his story. His personal journey in finding God. And, you know, I found God. And I want to share my personal journey. And holy fuck. I'm thinking now, how old was my dad when he had his own religious epiphany and started following the Lord like he I'm pretty sure he was like the same fucking age as me I think he was 20 years old. 20 or 21. That's fucking weird. I don't know. I just feel like that's weird. But I guess that happens to people in their 20s. Crazy fucking things happen. Damn, I'm still smoking this bowl. I went way too slow with it. That's for sure. I feel like that's kind of a waste sometimes. Like if you don't smoke your smoke fast enough, you don't get the high all at once right so you can't expect to get as high as you would if you just smoke a bowl over a long period of time but goddamn, I love weed I do I fucking love that shit. You cannot tell me that that weed is doing any wrong. You cannot tell me that the green goddess is not blessing you every single time. Weed is fucking amazing. It would be nice if 
edibles could work on me. Because then I could just be high for days by just eating. I was supposed to go work out, but I've just been sitting in my car smoking a bowl for the past 30 minutes. There's like a lot of people in the gym right now, and my social anxiety is not good recently. And to top it all off, I forgot my fucking earbuds. The worst possible thing. Pretty much the worst possible thing you can do. Going to the gym. When you don't want to... say a word to anybody or hear them say anything to you. Like, I need my earbuds, man. Ah, it sucks. I was gonna listen to some Tim Dillon. I think he's one of the funniest people alive. I don't know. It, I think so. A fat gay man who talks about his love for cocks and sucking people off. <gasps> I... It's just, it's hilarious. And he doesn't, he hasn't even talked about that recently, so it's kind of lame. I don't know what I want out of this life. So maybe I should try and figure that out. By process of elimination of what I don't want. Because if I, if I can... If I can figure out what I don't want, then... I might be able to figure out what I want over enough time. And I thought that's what I was doing by dropping out of college. I thought I was eliminating something I didn't want.
but now it kind of feels like I do want that. Why does, why does brain do this? Why does human body feel this way? Why can't we all just fucking get along? Someday, life's going to make sense. Not for everybody, but for some people, and hopefully for you, life will make sense. But of course, it won't make any sense at all, and it never will, and you know that. That's the universal language, you know that. What is, isn't. And what isn't, is. What was, wasn't. What wasn't, was. What has, hasn't. What hasn't, has. What's going to is not going to. What's not going to is going to. What has happened hasn't happened. And what hasn't happened has happened. Whatever hell is, heaven is. And whatever heaven is, hell is. Life is death and death is life.
the universal language is based on understanding. And part of that understanding is knowing that you know nothing. That's one of the biggest parts. You have to know that you know nothing for anything to make any sense. But of course, if you know that you know nothing, nothing can ever make any sense. Um... Still, that's the only way anything will ever make sense for you. Anything you do is the best option and the worst option. Whoa. That was cool. The whole sky flashed white like five ten times because I guess it's foggy or cloudy and there was must have been some lightning at this point I'm just <laughs> High as fuck, chilling in my car, talking for no apparent reason. But of course, that's really all I'm ever doing. I understand that this is not quality content. <laughs> it's not supposed to be. This is a reflection of the state of my being. Wherever I go, this goes. And right now, I'm not going anywhere. I'm I mean, I could go anywhere I 
I want to go far. But I know right now I'm not going anywhere and I'm stopping myself from doing that. I'm scared and anxious and indecisive I just remain frozen fight flight or freeze those are your options I've almost always throughout my life kind of like my fallback option and the the thing I do if I don't force myself to do anything else is freeze I always freeze. Then I have to really, really work to make myself fight. Even flight is hard. I just stay frozen. for really as long as possible or as long as is necessary for whatever threat or annoyance needs to pass I just stay frozen and wait I don't like that I don't like that about myself I've seen the ability in me to fight. I know I'm able to choose that response. It's a lot more work to fight than it is to freeze. Who knows, maybe I'm fleeing. 
maybe. <sighs> Damn. I've been. I've been out here for like 45 minutes and the gym is still fucking busy. I don't know. Guess I should just get over myself and work out without earbuds. Which sounds fucking terrible. Holy shit, I just saw the coolest lightning bolt ever. It's like a, it was in the sky, right above my head. Just going from cloud to cloud, just like triple bolts, just lighting up the sky. Quite amazing. Our skies do some miraculous things sometimes. You know, you wonder, you wonder if you could Do something to harness that natural energy. You wonder. Conspiracy theory? Could be our final go, folks. Let's make it one hell of a ride. And you know, I think I'm actually gonna put my seatbelt on this time. Just because it's scary. Life is meant to be lived to the fullest of your uh, I, I think love is the way. If you can follow love, you don't you don't need to worry about what's right and wrong. Whether you should or shouldn't do something.
fucking let whatever you love guide you and do what you love Woo! oh that one hit the ground that was so cool it just like like a few bolts in the sky and then one just straight down my life every time I drive this piece of shit on these back roads going up and down hills and now you know it's fucking storming we got the deer out here that come running across all the time uh I hope. Man, I won't say it. Never mind. Woo! That was no big. Yeah, I won't say that. I want to love again. I want to love myself. Easier said than done, of course. I have to prove to myself that I'm worthy of love, maybe, before I can feel good about loving myself again. the only 
only time you'll be able to find blissful ignorance for yourself is when you're on some type of drug. Because then, you know, it's not really you. The drug or Drug is a very loose term right now. Ow, fuck. But whatever you take, you know, that's kind of acting for you. You are the medium through which that supplement speaks. That's kind of how it is when we take anything. That's what humans do. We are the mediums. Everything speaks through us. We... that can talk. Why is that?
off my student loans. Look at that. Wow. I had to work so hard to do that. I mean, I suppose I did. I had to... <laughs> I had to watch my brother... some shitty job for a year your brother killed himself yeah I don't uh, I can see how those two things you know aren't very equal but that's just where I'm at what I had to go through get here but I don't even know where I am it's quite terrible really so much freedom and desire to act on it.
hear any other bullshit saying there's other pop tart pop tarts that are better. Cause no, no, s'mores. It's fucking s'mores pop tart. Although I have seen some fairly interestingly delicious looking flavors recently, I feel like. Something that had to do with the pretzel, you know? That might have been one of them. They need to make a black licorice Pop-Tart. I'd see if I walked in there. That would be quite a show, I'm sure. But I just want to go home and eat food. I love back and forth between wanting to get fat or to stay fit. Because I was probably down to like single digit body fat and you know that felt that was great. It was... It felt good. One meal a day. You know. Working out. A lot of striations. Some good 3D delts. Oh, fuck. I can't see. That, that's all great, but... Fast. 
something feels better for me than eating a lot and being on a full stomach. I think I think fasting can really get you places. Sometimes it just gets you to be really hungry in the end. Like I've done it for 72 hours. And I just wanted some food. Oh God, I'm coming in hot. Ending it here. I love you all.